four notes. Four of the most famous notes in classical music, short, 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 long. A very simple and small musical idea, but in Beethoven's hands, these notes take on a life of their own and form the basis of his entire symphony number no. five. Beethoven obsessively comes back to them in every movement of the symphony, again and again. He allegedly told his assistant that those notes represented fate knocking on his door. Two years earlier, he had learned that his worsening deafness was incurable, and it nearly drove him to suicide. He put his despair into a letter to his brothers, now known as the Heiligenstadt Testament, telling them about his misery, his growing isolation, and his commitment to his art, which ultimately is what saved him. In another letter, he said, I shall seize fate by the throat. It shall not bend nor crush me completely. In that sense, the Fifth Symphony is like a large-scale narrative of Beethoven's attempt to overcome his disability and cheat fate. By the time Beethoven started writing symphonies, Mozart and Haydn had established through their works a standardized form for each of a symphony's four self-contained distinct movements. There are several reasons why the Fifth Symphony was so groundbreaking. The first movement is in the traditional sonata form, which means you first lay out your primary theme in the home key, in this case C minor, then your secondary theme in another key. That's called the exposition. Then you play around with them for a while in various other keys. That's the development. Then you repeat all the music from the exposition, but this time everything is in the home key, both the primary and the secondary themes. That's the recapitulation. Sometimes you have a coda at the very end, which is a passage that brings the whole piece to an end. Beethoven's coda is just as long as the other sections, and is basically a second development. The second movement is a set of double variations. That means that two different themes are presented, followed by alternating variations of those themes. We start in the key of A-flat, and about a minute in, something very unexpected happens. The trumpets, trombones, and horns join the rest of the orchestra to play the second theme fortissimo in the key of C major. It sounds very victorious, and perhaps even patriotic but before it can really go anywhere, he puts the brakes on and we get 10 measures of increasingly strange harmonies. Beethoven subscribed to the idea that there were particular characteristics attached to musical keys, and C major was the key of God. So in that moment, it almost sounds like the gates of heaven have briefly opened, only to shut again and leave us back down in our earthly graves. As you might imagine, all of this would have sounded very unusual to an audience in 1808. The third movement is a scherzo, which means joke in Italian. That form has its origins in the Minuet and Trio, which is a type of slow courtly dance that originated in 17th century France. Beethoven marked the tempo, however, as dotted half note equals 96. Way too fast to dance to. So that's the joke, get it? The other unexpected thing he does in this movement is go from C minor to B flat minor. We call that a remote key relationship because a C minor chord doesn't have any notes in common with B flat minor. It might be no big deal to write like that now, but in Beethoven's time, this was a huge departure from the norm. Beethoven gets into the fourth movement by having the tension build and build at the end of the third movement, and then goes directly into the finale without a break. That 
That's called attacca, Italian for attack, and it had never been done before. And you suddenly have piccolo, contrabassoon, and three trombones, instruments that until that point had only been used in opera orchestras for dramatic effect, not symphony orchestras. Just like in all the other movements, that fate theme shows up again in the finale. But this time, given how blazing and triumphant it is, there is no doubt that Beethoven was victorious over fate. The symphony premiered in Vienna on December 22nd, 1808 at the Theater an der Wien, and despite an ill-prepared orchestra and an unheated concert hall, it was an immediate hit. To this day, it remains one of the most popular and recognizable works of all time. (laughs) ¶¶ 